How are we doing, you wonderful people? My name is Jay, and welcome to another episode of Chilling with the Omis podcast. Now, before we get into the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the little notification bell. That way you guys will receive all the channel notifications and you can keep up to date with all the latest videos. But now that's out of the way, let's get into the podcast. And today's guest is genuinely going to be one of my favorites off the bat, purely because he's a very, very good friend of mine, someone I thought would never be on the podcast, to be honest, or if you weren't, were going to be on the podcast, not so soon. I thought it was going to be more of a delayed thing. He's a very good friend of mine, an incredible filmmaker, someone who's recently made the switch to vaping. Uh, today's guest is Sam Wiggs. How you doing? Yeah, not too bad, you know, suffering. My lung, my lungs are killing me recently. Oh, really? So yeah. I'm smoking. Yeah, I think I genuinely <laughs> think so. Like the thing is, like, um, obviously we'll go through this probably um, in more detail later on. But yeah, of course. Um, like, I haven't touched a cigarette since I started va vaping. I nice. I think that's a, a mixture of things. Like, um, you lot won't know him, but uh, you remember Mitch, my old flat, uh, yeah, my yeah. old flatmate. Um, I used to pinch his vape when I couldn't be bothered to go outside for a fag. Oh, okay, so and, you're not not new to it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not entirely new. I think my body's had. Well, I've obviously had some practice, and I I know what it felt like. And on top of that, like I know, like because yeah, again, probably going to go more into it later on. But uh, I tried giving up about this will be the sixth time that I've tried to give up oh, smoking, wow. uh, and the. Best I did, like, the, my record is two months on uh, cold turkey, which I found really wow. weird. Hey, no, to be fair, cold turkey is hard. That's yeah. literally why it's what we spoke about. But before we get into this podcast, there is one thing I want to say. Me and Wiggs are very good friends. We've known each other a long time. And I've also come to realize that vaping is an adult industry. I mean, I've known that from the start. But what I mean is this podcast is always designed for adults and vapors in the industry. So if there may be some explicit language throughout, I'm not going to go for an edit. So if you're easily offended, then by all means, click off. If not, I just wanted to pre-warn you in case any swear words start falling from the sky because I know what weeks can be like. Uh, before Fuck. we <laughs> See what I mean? See what I mean? <laughs> Literally, can't even, can't even, nah, no, 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 no. But I know you were starting to, to get into it, but mm. you know, um, one of the only requirements for this uh, podcast is to vape, which you now do. And yep. I'm so proud of you for making the switch. I feel like anyone that follows my Instagram stories is probably thinking, you poor guy, I've just been berating <laughs> you into doing it. That's not the case. We have spoke about this many a time. And it, it was mainly a money thing yeah. uh, because obviously you've Definitely. recently come back from Spain, which I'll let yeah. you explain about. Um, but yeah, so tell people who don't know you a bit about yourself, what, what your interests, what sort of things are you into, what, you know, just your general every day. So like, okay, so biggest part of me is film. I, uh, you know, well, I've been, I've been working bar on and off for 10 years, but my true passion is film. Um, okay. and, um, like I did, a, I did a, my degree in film, um, and what university was that? Uh, well, I did my first two years at Western Supermare. E Western. Yeah, Western. Oh, mate, we had a mad weekend oh. in Western. Probably I'm, some most of that stuff I probably can't put on this podcast, but I'm, it was a great weekend. Just put it this way: I'm still hungover from it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not fully recovered to be nah. myself. To be fair. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did my first two years in Western. Then I transferred to University of West England. Okay, which is terrible. <laughs> um I, actually it's not terrible they just didn't give like for transferring for the third year like into a, into a group of i think well i went from a class size of something like 15 to 83 whoa and so obviously they've all had two years yeah, together yeah, so they know who they like working with and yeah, yeah. i have just popped into the third year into existence and these people have never met me before know nothing about me and so That's crazy it was just, I don't think they gave me enough support. If there are any UE lecturers watching right now, I don't think you gave me, I don't entirely blame it on you. I mean, to be fair, but, if they're lecturing a class of 80 something, yeah. there's only so much they can do. Yeah, like, but I do get where you're coming from. You yeah. feel like you didn't have enough support I, uh, yeah, making I feel, that transfer. It obviously falls partly on my head, partly on theirs, I feel yeah, like. Um, but yeah, I did filmmaking. I made... Um, I've been on set for roughly, well, over 20 films I've been on set on. I've directed about you half of them. A uh, Built the set for um, a really great, actually, it's one of my crowning achievements, built the set for a really great BFI-funded short okay. called Zero Sum. 
Right. Well, I say build a set, I assisted with building the set. I just sound worse the more I say. <laughs> it's um, all good, man. It's all good. Uh, which had Amy Fionn Edwards from Peaky Blinders on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's uh, a big name. She's absolutely lovely. Yeah? Yeah. She's Did you not have any lovely. of that sort of diva side to no, her at all? No, no, no. She is absolutely charming. Oh, and wow. uh, if anyone uh, watches Emmerdale, uh, I made a no. short. And, yeah, I know. But... <laughs> You have an audience, not just you. Yeah, Come no, on. I know, I know. Some people will watch <laughs> that sort of stuff. <laughs> I'm not a fan of soaps myself, but I did work with. Um, uh, I can't remember his character's name. Uh, I did. I did watch some of Emmerdale to sort of get you know, like, so I could actually talk to him about his biggest project. Like yeah, his yeah, of course. Biggest ongoing project. That must um, be pretty surreal. Yeah, his name was uh, Basker Patel. Absolutely lovely guy again. Um, he was great, actually. That was a student film. Uh, we were just talking about that, actually. Is the just there's a project that I continually return to, which is doomed. Um, I'm going to be brutally honest, but this version of it did make it to a film festival in India called nice. Source Code, which I was well Mate, proud of. That's that's mad. I know, right? Like I'm, that's crazy. I've been in two film festivals. I'm well proud of that. That's mental. I know, right? Now, just a little bit for you guys. Anything I do, film related or even YouTube related, when it comes to equipment, lighting, uh, techniques, editing styles, Sam's always been my go-to uh, because of all of the work I've seen or seen you study and the work that you've shown me. Even though you will still say it's like the worst stuff you've ever made, I was just blown away that someone from a similar background for myself who had a passion for something could produce something on, I say low budget, but like starter cameras. Like for example, all of my content I make on the channel is on a Canon 200D. A lot of camera enthusiasts will go, why are you using that? It's a starter camera. But when I speak to you, you're like, well, you're pushing that camera to its max. So you're getting the right stuff from it. Yeah. Like, and I just always, I always respect that. Like, I mean, the thing, the thing, like, I know what well, I'm only 27, so I'm not like, I'm not like this veteran of the industry or anything like that. I mean, you've been doing it long enough to know your way around I, it. Yeah, I know my way around it fairly, fairly well enough, and I've been on enough sets, etc. And the thing is, like, anyone can press auto on any camera, and yeah, of course, get a decent picture. Um, and this is completely off topic, but it, if there are any filmmakers watching be good with the kit you got before you upgrade like that's 100%. that's a fact of it so there is a, a scary little fact i don't want to turn this podcast into just filmmaking because we could quite easily do that mm. but one of the things i want to make sure is in this is i remember when i was telling sam what my first camera setup was for youtube it was a nikon d3300 uh, and i bought myself a sigma 10 to 20 mil lens so it was wide angle as well as the, the kit lens and i supported the sigma yeah, I mean, you did, but you, the first words you said to me was, how are you producing video with yeah. a Nikon? Like, I just don't get it. And I actually went back after having the upgrade of, to the Canon and, and, you know, doing everything with this now. It's such an amazing camera for, for my purpose. I went back to the, uh, the Nikon. I usually have it in frame of some videos and stuff. And I went to pick it up and I, I actually had to weigh it. It's like two kilos as a run and yeah. gun. I, I was vlogging on that yeah. thing. It's mental. Like you're, you're an absolute madman. And quite frankly, <laughs> like not to blow smoke up your ass, but like you genuinely did an amazing, you got everything you could out of that Nikon. Thank you. For those not in the know, Nikon, just a bit of context, Nikons are photography cameras, not, not video cameras. Yeah. yeah. And for a lot of people that sounds weird because... Yeah, the, they're just, better suited to one or the other usually. Yeah. Like, just trust me on that one. If you want to know more, go look up more YouTube videos, etc. Because this isn't a camera. Or podcast. I'll leave Sam's uh, socials and you can just pester it all you want. <laughs> but before we get into this whirlwind of filmmaking, mm. uh, it'd be really interesting to know, as it's relatively fresh for you, your kind of smoking to vaping journey and, and kind of your history with previous attempts at giving up and what's made this time more successful. Yeah. Um, so as I mentioned before, I've tried giving up about, well, as I said, this will be my sixth time. Um, Fair play. I haven't been doing it for massively long, as you alluded to. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, um, we're measuring in days and weeks rather than you years, know, years, for example. Yeah, no. Um, I think this would be good, though, for a lot of people who are new to vaping. They'll yeah. kind of be very, very relatable to, to themselves. Oh, yeah. I've been vaping long enough now where... Uh, and a lot, a lot of the viewers have been vaping long enough where you kind of, it'll be like a nostalgia podcast for us because yeah. you'll bring, hopefully you'll be talking about a few things that will bring back them emotions mm. rather than things that I'm not, I do this for my job yeah. and 
I, I hear it all the time, but to hear it from a friend, it, it, it doesn't take anything away from it, but it's yeah. just so I'm excited for you because yeah. I know what's to come later on, if that yeah. makes sense. So how long were you smoking for? Oh, uh, so be about 11 years, give or take, since I was 16. So about 11 okay. years. Are you um, quite a heavy smoker? About anywhere between, well, busy day, 10 a day, quiet day, 20 a day sort of thing. Stressful day, maybe pushing on 30. Wow. It, it fluctuated. And I fair play. But, um, so yeah, and like, as I said, like I, I tried to quit about six mm. times. Um, tried everything from like uh, patches to gum to cold turkey twice, I think. And I tried that. Ooh. Champak stuff. You, oh, you know, I, I tried that myself. That was weird. Like if it's like it a medication might work. It? Yeah, yeah. It so you take might pills. Work, but it didn't for me. Like basically, I did it because it's a two week course. Yeah, yeah. Which you can keep topping up, but I was young to be fair, stupid. by by day ten, day eleven, like you don't want to smoke. And what I didn't really like don't. about Champaks is the first week is double strength, mm. one in the morning, one at night. But because it's a double strength. Uh, isn't it like a chemical that kind of tricks your brain into thinking you don't want nicotine? Well, it, I got it, very it sick on it. Yeah, it makes cigarettes taste like... Well, I know I'm really showing how badly I swear now, but it makes tigger, cigarettes taste like shit. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. It genuinely does. It helps I, age you come away from them. Yeah, it really does. It really did. Like for the two weeks, I think I had like two cigarettes and that was like in the first day. Yeah. Um. But then literally after the two weeks, I thought to myself, I, I think I was like, I was early 20s, late teens sort of thing at the yeah. time. Um, and I thought to myself, sweet, I've quit smoking. I'm going to go out for a drink. Oh, God. And so what's the first thing you want during, when you're having a drink? Yeah, is cigarette. a cigarette. And habitary cigarettes, mate. I say this yeah. to every single person. Yeah. Habitary cigarettes are the, uh, well, the hardest to break. Exactly. First thing in the morning with a cup of coffee. Uh, for some people, after sex after dinner, when you're out drinking, everyone has their own habitary cigarettes and they're very, very difficult mm. to break away from. Oh, of course. Like, um, so yeah, like I was absolutely hammered that night and wandering the smoking area. It was actually in, you remember Barracudas? Oh, mate. It yeah, I remember Barracudas. I can remember no. Barracudas. Was it still Barracudas or was it Silkworm? It's Silkworm at the oh, time. Oh, Silkworm time. Silkworm times. at the time. Um, and yeah, I was just out in the smoking area back there just trawling for fags like because I had oh, none on me because I thought, that's it, I've quit. So I'm just borrowing fags and lighters off the oh, room and give it to me. Bet you were everyone's best friend that night. Oh, God, everyone bloody hated me by the end of it because you know me when I'm drunk. I can get quite obnoxious as well. <laughs> Oh, it's not just when you're drunk. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm lovable, obnoxious. Yeah, you, you know? you've got this charm about you. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then did did my best uh, with cold turkey. Like the second time, cold turkey. That was the last time I tried to quit. That was a, okay. How'd that go? That went really well. Um, I did two months. Wow. Um, Fair play, mate. Yeah, I did two months, and then not to get too far into it, but I had quite a I had a fairly large personal tragedy at the time. Oh, okay. And it just became a thing. I can, it was Tom, actually. I went around his after it. Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm yeah, not going to get into it with you because I don't want to stop no, that's, story. That's fine. Um, and I uh, went around Tom's and just obviously stressed out me marbles. Yeah, of course. Like, I just went, I went to Tom. I said, I know I've quit, but just give me a fag now yeah, before yeah. even explaining to him or anything like that. I just needed something. Um, and I think that's why, I think that's why vaping is working is because it's almost like having a fag. It's a nicotine hit whilst holding something like that. It's so similar. It, yeah. It, it for me replicates the smoking sensation. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's been, as I said, it's been really easy for me to put it. Like I haven't actually come. I, for the last few days I've come out with cigarettes in my pocket. I've got nothing. Look, yeah, he was saying to me, um, he, he's recently moved back from Spain. And he was like, oh, I've got all this tobacco. I'm not going to throw it to waste. Yeah. Um, and me and Tom collectively kind of helped Wigs out to, to get him on the vape. And uh, yeah, he, I've been asking him about it. And he's saying, look, I'm just not having tobacco anymore. I just don't want it. And I'm yeah. so proud. That it's, for, for, from my standpoint, doing this as a job, like I said, it's not expected because that would make me sound very arrogant. But I've been doing this long enough to know what works and what doesn't for some people. But half that will only work if the person who's asking me for the advice genuinely wants to do it. 
because that's that's one thing is you've got to be willing to take that plunge. Exactly. exactly. Um, but no, fair enough. Like so, yeah. Um, if anyone wants cheap Spanish backy? <laughs> uh, oh, that's a great place to promote on a vaping channel. I know, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you know someone that's weaning themselves off, like hit me up. Um, hey, why not? Why not? <laughs> Um, and yeah, uh, it, it was like, I definitely would never have been able to quit in Spain. Like, genuinely. yeah. So far too cheap, obviously far last too week we, we had Elliot on who yeah. you know, had his spell of living in France and we got to, you know, have that sort of insight to the, the French vape scene. Mm. Was there much of one in Spain? It's non-existent. Oh really? It's really not. So, um, it's difficult. So basically like, I mean, I could call it a tobacconist, but it feels weird to call it a tobacconist because it's like a tobacconist post office. Oh, uh, one of those run shop does everything sort of, yeah, thing. sort of thing. Okay. Um, they call this Stankos. So if I say a Stanko, that's what I'm basically saying tobacconist. Um, and like, that's, that's all they got. And there's no, I didn't see a single vape shop while I was over there. Oh, wow. I might have missed one. I was in the Malaga region. If anyone knows of any in the Malaga region, let me know because I will be visiting fairly often just for hey, me fair own play. reference. Yeah, yeah, fair play. Um, comment down below and Jay will pass it on to me. <laughs> uh, <coughs> oh, sorry, I'm coughing up stuff I haven't had since I was 12. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, it's basically non-existent. Um, I suppose it's because tobacco is so cheap over there. It's really cheap. I mean, it was about £10 per pouch and about five for a pack of 20. Wow. And they have, it's like over here, you've got the shutters in front of the yeah, tobacco. Yeah. Like, it's all like... Massively taxed as yeah, well. Yeah, massively taxed. Uh, the packaging has to look like it comes straight out of a Russian gulag. <laughs> You know, like, and I agree with that. I genuinely, even when I smoked, I genuinely agreed with that. I thought tax, tax the living shit out of me. Yeah, yeah, of course. Make it as unappealing as physically possible. I mean, the way like, I see it is it's, it's an unhealthy habit to have. Exactly. Now, I say this to a lot of people. Over the last hundred years, smoking was a an amazing business venture that was glorified and commercialized for such a long time as a cool thing to do. Oh, of it's only over the last 50, 60 years that we've gone... Yeah, it's actually pretty bad for you. Yeah. So we should probably cut back a bit. But the da- by then, the damage is done. Yeah, I mean, hundred years is how many yeah. generations? Oh, do you God, see what yeah. I mean? It's, in, it's yeah, instilled like, in your brain. Within, like, I mean, there's this. I've had, I've been having this internal debate, and <coughs> this is only really tangentially. Tangentially, um, well, it's kind of related. It's sort of like smoke on screen. I can't imagine personally. I can't imagine a vape replacing a cigarette on screen. Yeah, we spoke about this before. And I mean, I suppose if from a filmmaker's standpoint, if you was to try and replicate that with a vape, yeah, I think you'd probably be considered new age. Yeah. Because people go, oh, okay. Exactly. However, because of the regulations and things, and I know that they still get away with cigarettes, I think yeah. it would cause more of an uproar than it would just using yeah, a cigarette. I do genuinely think it would as well. And you also you'd have the arseholes going, well, can they not just go five minutes without shoving stuff down our throat? Fuck off. Um, <laughs> you've been told it's just honestly it's just one of those of and i think part of it is my inherent bias because everything i love about smoke on screen because i'm going to say it right now smoke on screen is oh it looks cool it's the sexiest thing on earth yeah like honestly the way the light cuts through it the way the the, you know the frame rates the way it it all up just off the end like it's so and i think i think my big problem with it is the smoke from a vape isn't as defined in shape yeah no i'll give you that I think there's moment like um, every now and then I see out of the top of my vape just little wisps of smoke and yeah, that, yeah. Look, that would look amazing. I think you could replicate it, but you'd be it would be a very it'd be something you have to play with a lot. Yeah, like you'd have to like you literally have to like I mean you know it from filming stuff. You when you change things or you try and do something new, you have to play with stuff a lot. Yeah, and I think because it's never even been tried really, from at least that I know of, there's probably some student film. Uh, that I tell you what, down the ne- next about. short film you work on, get me in it. I'll, we'll use a vape and see if it works. <laughs> but like, you'd have to play with it and see yeah. what light it works with. It and, and it's hard like sometimes that. doing reviews because I know how. To be fair, if you're filming in 60 frames, you can get some real not like the the vapor and the right lighting. The vapor really does become more dense and you can you can really see it in frame mm. um for when i do my reviews and i do like the what how it vapes sort of segment yeah. you can see it quite cool and obviously yeah. 
with different devices, it depends on what mm. sort of vapor it produces, yeah. but things like that, you could get some really cool effects. Yeah, but of course you can. But how that translates into film, it exactly. would be very, very I different. Mean, it's, it's, it's so difficult because like, it's, it's one of those things of um, cigarette smoke works so perfectly with film. I could put it in slow-mo, fast-mo, yeah. or normal speed, and yeah. it'll look great. Whereas, as you said, as you just said, with vape, you kind of have to slow-mo it a bit to yeah. find that shape and to find yeah. that definition in it. Um, I mean, like, UL or Smock or whoever, like, if you want to figure out a way of making a film vape, hit me up. Yeah, you go. That'd be awesome. Hit, hit me up. Yeah, yeah, like, that'd be awesome. Just make it for film. I'm cool with that. Um, I'm just I'm just asking people to do things for me. <laughs> At this point, that's all the this sense is of entitlement become. for this millennial was ridiculous. Yeah, I know, uh, <laughs> but right. So, you've recently obviously made the uh transition to vaping. Mm. Uh, how did you find the overall process? I've found it really easy so far. Like, okay, I don't think I'm normal for that. Like, I don't okay. think I'm the average sort of person for that. As I said, like, I think I can't remember whether the cameras were rolling or not. I think, uh, as, well, I did, yeah, it was where. It was um, with Mitch. I I used his vape every now yeah, and then. Yeah. Like I've been surrounded by vaping as well. Like so, I you're mean, not completely new to the I'm not completely the new environment. To it. The world, you know, the world around me has slowly but surely just moved to vaping, and I think that really helped me. Uh, if you're in like a small village where you got a thatched roof pub and everyone in there smokes about forty a day and sounds like it's, they're chewing gravel, then I don't imagine it's going to be as easy. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I'll give you that. But I do still have like little things like um, every time I quit smoking, including this time, um, I smoke in my dreams. I still oh, smoke okay. in my dreams, um, which I've always found weird. Um, but like, as I said, we're measuring in a very short time period at this yeah, point. Yeah, cool. Like, so I don't know, maybe one day that will be replaced by vaping in my dreams. But like, I don't know. I'll be honest with you, I don't think I've ever, ever dreamed about a vaping or vaping in a dream, or smoking in a dream. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, I forget my dreams when I wake up anyway, like most people. Yeah, but I'm a filmmaker, so I dream in film. No, that's fair. Oh, <laughs> so, it's like, so cool. It's so good, because then I just get the absolute coolest shot in my head, and then I wait. Well, I say it's really good. I, I get the absolute coolest shot in my head, and then wake up in the morning and go, God damn it, I can't remember it. Like, <laughs> And I'm just trying to figure out what the shot was, and it's like the best thing I've ever come up with, and it's just gone into the ether. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, overall, it's been it's been as I said, like to, uh, yesterday was the first day I went out without any tobacco sort of products on me. It's uh, a big step. It, it was genuine, and I found myself walking down the street um, and genuinely thinking to myself, like I had about. A five, ten minute period where I was genuinely thinking to myself, I could really go for a fag right now. Like, yeah, of course. Uh, and that was literally me walking into town first thing in the morning sort of thing. So it's the first time I've walked away from tobacco, basically. And like, um, and yeah, I had about a five minute period where I was like, oh, I could really do with a fag right now. And like, to be fair, I just chugged the living crap out of this for about five yeah, minutes. Yeah, so... For, for yeah, for people who don't know, with with Wiggs's new setup, we, we set him up on a on a Smock Nord pod system, um, and you know because he varies the amount of cigarettes you smoke yeah. daily, uh, we went for a twenty milligram Nixel just to kind of see if that would you know help it easier to to make the transition because I think with free base nicotine like the PG stuff I yeah. spoke to you about before, I think a six milligram would have been too weak. Mm. I think a twelve Definitely. milligram would have been too harsh on the throat yeah. because you're at such a, a I say a strange average, but it's all over the place. Yeah, exactly. Whereas a 20 milligram, you've got less of a throat hit, you still get the nicotine content, yeah. and you get better flavor. Yeah, like that's, so, that is working for me perfectly. I'm um, so happy. Um, and that is secondhand. That's borrowed off of someone. I am planning on going to the Coco at some point. Hey, my guy, I love this thing. I actually love this thing. Like, um, give my own review. Sod it, Jay. I'm taking over your channel. <laughs> the smock is convenient not enough flavor in it i've tried the cocoa i borrowed your cocoa a couple of times haven't yeah I? yeah that was the one thing i look for for people who aren't aware wigs since he's come back he went to spain for a, a couple of years um he, he made his move back recently i think it was december just gone december 19th yeah um 
and since he's been you know looking for a job waiting for his uh paperwork to come yeah. through to have like an english bank account again because uh, it's been so long you're taking my taxes yeah. um well, I'm while that period has been laptop. changing, obviously I've come back to the Braintree store uh, and Wiggs has been in just to see how I am. But I think this is what I was going to actually talk to you about in the next segment is I think that's had a massive impact in terms of Definitely not just has. me, but being around other people yeah. in the community that vape too. Yeah. And I think that's had a, a, a bit of an influence on, you know, oh, Swain's decision. Of course it has. Like, um, as I said, like the, the like I'd never I never would have quit in Spain. Like the the vaping scene is non existent. The only vapes you get. I still find get, that mad. I mean, well, I don't and I do. It makes sense. Yeah, like I mean the, the only vapes you get are blue, which we've we've already discussed, like our tobacco industry owned vapes, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. like it just seems like a country very held by, like, in the clutches securely. Of it's not just Spain. So a smoke. lot of the globe mm. rely on their tobacco sales yeah. because they have for the last 80 to 100 years. And they realize how much of a commodity it becomes. Uh, I mean, you only have to take a look at America where they naturally grow it. And that's, you know, mm. when they were colonized originally, yeah. they're like, oh, wow, we can grow tobacco awesome. leaves. Awesome. I feel naturally. really, I feel really like chilled out by, the, <laughs> by burning this plant and also a bit cancerous. No. So we'll just um, sell it to people, not tell them about the health risks for yeah. ages, and then we'll catch on. Yeah. So that doesn't really surprise me, but is there anything else that you would like to tell the viewers about yourself that you haven't touched on yet? Um, or does that pretty much wrap it up in a nutshell? I feel like I'm fairly well wrapped up now. I feel like I'm... I'll be honest with you. I think the only thing we didn't really touch on was, you know what you were doing in Spain, but yeah, at the same time... I'm a bar supervisor, if you want to know. It's not that work. interesting. It was an English pub. Everyone there was like 50 plus. Nothing changed. <laughs> Ever. Everyone Ever. just goes there to die. Pretty much. Like, I lived in the UK's Florida for about two years. That's about, wow. that's about how it works. Like, there's no point. There's nothing to be curious about. I learned a bit of the language. That's about the only thing. So if you had to rate it out of 10... In terms of overall where it's living, working, uh, overall lifestyle, what would you say? I mean, I, it depends. Like, what point in my life am I talking about? Like, right now. now. So, right if, now? if I said to you, look, Wix, I've got a load of money. Yeah. I'm going to move away. I'm going to think about going to Spain. Yeah. Is there anything you can tell me about it? No. Right. Okay. No, I'm telling you, as in, no, don't do it. Sort right. Of okay. Thing. It's, okay. It's, it's not worth it for um, someone our age. For anyone our age, really. Our generation is not really built. It's, maybe better than in the maybe it'll be better in the cities like i'd say yeah. if you're going if you're going to move over there like at madrid um, barcelona your madrid your barcelona's even your malaga malaga is a beautiful city um but don't move to the countryside like every other english person does <laughs> because not to you know be hipster about it or anything like that but there is literally nothing going on Oh, really? There, no, there's nothing. Like, you, you, you're taking a step back to the 70s, really. It's really not built for anyone our age. And the unemployment rate for under 30s is floating around 30% sort of thing. That's like, mad. Yeah, it's just... It's it's weird because it's... you got to remember with Spain, like, they only came out of a fascist re regime in the 70s, like, late mid to late 70s. That's so true. So they're still, like... In a transitional period, yeah. They're very much in a transitional period, which is actually working out all right for them at the moment. Like, they're, they're not... I mean... I mean, their elections are all over the place at the moment, but... Overall, it's not too bad. Overall, some good, some bad, you know. Um, Fair play. And but and it's dirt cheap, so no worries. So that pretty much wraps up the introduction. Get to know of Samuel Wiggs. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Give us two minutes. We'll be right back for the meat of the podcast. Sorry about that little break there. Welcome back to Chilling with the Yummies podcast. I'm here with my. One of my very good friends, uh, Sam Wiggs, uh, filmmaker, recent vapor, um, bit of an all round everyone. You've you've done bartending for years. Yeah. You've lived in Spain. You, you've been for it all. Done some care work as well. Care work. Yeah. Fair play. Don't so, see many smokers though. No. Oh really? No. Oh, Do you enough. imagine you would? Hey, no. To be fair, the amount of people I know that work in care that always have to have their cigarette breaks because it's their only sort of break in their no, shift. No, I mean like one. living there. Oh right, like yeah, staff. Oh god, staff smoke like oh, chimneys. Yeah, exactly. Like, I would love to tap into that market from a, from a vaping business perspective. Oh god, yeah. But cool. Here's your alternative. See what happens. Um, but today's main topic of the podcast is something which is is going to be a bit mixed. 
I wanted to talk about obviously Sam's, um, you know, new to vaping. He's been doing it for about around a week now. Um, and he's already said that he's not smoking traditional tobacco products at all. He's not even carrying them around with him. So I kind of wanted to talk about um, your experience about that a bit more in depth and, you know, really get to know what you were thinking, how, how it all works. And also because you've been smoking for so long, just like I was, I was a pack a day for seven years. I kind of wanted to know your views on um, big tobacco companies that now have a slice in the pie in this industry. Mm. So I don't really know where to start, but we'll probably go for, uh, let's talk about when you were making the switch, was it more of a, uh, had you made the decision in your head first? Was it something that happened over time? Like like mm. I said briefly in the last segment, yeah. being in this industry or being in this community that we've built here and speaking yeah. to other vapors, do you, do you find that that had a bit more of a, an impact? Yeah. I mean, definitely, definitely, um, because, well, as I, as I've said, I've been trying to quit on and off for years at this point. Um, vaping never really seemed a realistic option until I started coming in here. Okay. And I, when I say realistic, I, I Was mean, it a case of seeing I, other people that have already I done that? I think so, yeah. And I think part of it, I, I wouldn't say, like, part of it was it didn't seem like a realistic option. And the other part of it was um, my perception of vapors beforehand oh this would be interesting to talk about so where did it start and where did it transition so obviously so obviously you've got the the whole sort of like uh you know the whole memes of like i get it you vape and everything yeah, yeah, like that yeah. which obviously did have some sort of impact mate yeah um, we, we live through that yeah uh, it's, a, it's a tough time for vapors <laughs> but at the I'm same time i'm still gonna say it though i mean, I'm still gonna I've, say said, it. I've said on recent videos as well like I totally endorse it. Like yeah. we get it, you vape, and it's part of the culture now. I, I get it. It's it is one of those things. And there was a time in the industry where it was all about chucking the biggest clouds because that's where companies had gone. Oh, this is new. We yeah. look what we can do with our coils. Look what we can do with this. Yeah, it just become like a little mini niche of the industry. Yeah, it, it became this massive thing. And then, like, I think the big, the big off putting bit was the influx of people you got especially with those big clouds and those mods and devices made f to just spit out clouds for days yeah um was that influx of people who have never smoked before but vaped right so this is me personally mm. from this perspective i've met a lot of people there's a re new regular customer he's a really really nice guy genuinely has got nothing bad to say about him but when you start learning about their, I say their vaping past or what made them switch and you get to know these people, yeah. the amount of people that, like you said, haven't smoked but go straight to vaping mm. baffles me because yeah. the way I interpret my job is this is a, a perfect tool to make the switch from smoking to vaping. Yeah. It's, it's primary use. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't no. made to be a fashion accessory. No, it wasn't at the end of the day. I'm still... I, oh, it just baffles me yeah, because I was like, I was trained in a way to I see that as preying on the vulnerable. Yeah, I wouldn't go course. knock on a cul-de-sac for an eight-year-old woman and try and get her to buy new bifold in French doors that yeah. she doesn't need. The same way I wouldn't want to give you a nicotine addiction exactly. if you don't have one. Exactly. Makes no sense. And like I get I get I get you've got the whole zero milligrams sort of juices and everything like that. But what I mean, like my biggest problem, like was and quite frankly, my opinion is it's your body. Stick what you want in it. I well, don't within really reason. <laughs> as long as it doesn't cause you, well, I was going to say bodily harm, but quite frankly, some people enjoy that. Yeah, exactly. Um, as long as it's not affecting me, like do what you want, do what you no, want. That's fair enough. Um, and the ones that really put me off were the ones that never smoked before, and so I'd never had the etiquette that smokers have had. Ah, oh, you know okay. what it's yeah, like yeah. being a smoker. Like, of course, anywhere near a child, you're the demon, yep. uh, which is fair. Like, I'm. All of these criticisms are coming from a fair place. This is just what we've learned. Like yeah, you never, you never blow into someone's face. Yep. Um, the amount of times I check the wind. Yeah, yeah, just to see that people behind you or yeah. around you aren't going to get a face full of cloud exactly. or a face full of smoke. Yeah, no, I totally um, agree. Tend not to talk with a mouth full of smoke. Oh yeah. Like, One, it makes you sound funny, and two, yeah. it's just not nice. Exactly. There's nothing right. worse than having a conversation like this, and you just got these random splatters of yeah. like smoke coming out. Exactly. You. It's horrible. Exactly. And um, prime example, if he is watching this right now, <laughs> I consider you a friend. I genuinely do. But you did something that really got on my nerves. Wow. And so are you going to be name dropping? No, I'm not going to be oh. name dropping. <laughs> I thought it was going to be some tea. I, don't, I really don't want to like put him too far in it. Like. It, it was a friend who had never smoked. We knew that okay. already. And he moved over to vaping. Okay. 
No offense, mate, but you're a bit of a hipster. Like that's Wee. kind of why you did it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I'm really just, I'm going to make your your bloody comments section hate me, aren't I? Um, <laughs> they'll, they'll probably love you to be fair. <laughs> but um, yeah, so he started vaping. Um, and I can remember, like I can genuinely remember um, sat there with me. It was me and my flatmate and him on our sofa. And me and my flatmate were playing a video game at the time. Like we're taking it, taking turns. I can't yeah, yeah. remember what game it was, but we're all taking turns or something like that. Or we're watching a film. I can't remember what. It's something where we have to look at the screen. Right. And I'm really intently watching this screen, and just this massive cloud just <laughs> floats straight across my vision. This is mate. I can't remember if he asked to vape in our flat, so I'm not going to like derail him for that because yeah. I might have said yes. I can't remember. It wasn't that big a deal, quite yeah, frankly. Yeah, it's not that deep to be fair. What got on my nerves was the fact that it went straight across my face. And if I and I knew, because I was smoking at the time, I knew if I did that to someone, like oh, mate. even a smoker yeah, it'd be with a cigarette smoke, yeah, 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 yeah. They were, I, Ooh, hell I'd, would break loose. I would get it in the neck. Yeah, yeah. And he was the sort of person that would cut, like I think I had heard it and say, like I'm quoting from him, but from a different time where he had said like, what, it's just water vapor. I'm just like, that's not it the point. Might, it, he, I mean, he's factually right. It is yeah. water vapor, but it still but, doesn't make any less annoying. No, exactly. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I, I am going to name drop and I'm going to throw her under <laughs> the bus. Right? Nick does this still to this day sometimes. Now, I will admit, it's unintentional. She'll forget where she is, but uh, I'll be watching something on telly. I'll be playing FIFA. She's on her iPad, listening to something in her own mm. world. And then, oh, you know you know what you like when you're playing FIFA, yeah. especially when you're playing online. You don't want to lose. <laughs> no. And all of a sudden, exactly. you'll be going through on goal, you're in the final third or something that's going your way. Yeah. You just see this big cloud. Yeah. And you're like, I can't see the telly. Yeah. And I just look at her. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, sorry. It's like, what? No. I know you got to blow She's blowing it away from her thing yeah. into mine. Like, what? Yeah. What are you doing, love? Yeah. Stop it. But like, the thing is, I, I had that experience when I was still smoking. <laughs> so that became 10 times more annoying mm. to me. And it really put me off of moving over to vape because I really didn't... It's not that... I, I didn't think that every vapor was like that. No, and but I, you do get stereotypes. Yeah, exactly. I, just, I wanted to avoid stereotype, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what that's what really delayed me. And as I said, I would never have quit smoking in, in Spain. A, because there is no vape scene whatsoever. Yeah, and I, I guarantee if you did find one, they'd be so expensive, yeah. it would put you off. Exactly. And B, because tobacco is so cheap anyway... It's really difficult to say no. And like I've spent the last two years genuinely not really enjoying smoking that much. Oh, okay. Like I think that's a big reason why, another reason why it's become so easy for me to quit is because I've just not enjoyed it. It's It's been one of those of it's an addiction, not an enjoyment yeah. thing. Like all the other times where I've tried to quit, I genuinely enjoyed smoking. To be fair, I have, I have had to stick up for you and also feel a little bit sorry for you when you're in the shop and I've got other regulars in and you're just like, yeah, I'm just going outside for a cigarette and everyone's like, what? Yeah. Traitor. You yeah. can't do that. What is he doing? I'm like, look, leave him alone. He's just got back. He's going to make the switch. Yeah. Just right now, he can't afford it. And they're yeah. like, all oh, right. But, but you can't sit outside the shop and smoke. And I'm like, it's not that deep. Like, I get it. He's not trying to, do you know what I mean? Like, so I feel your pain yeah. on that one. I, I probably shouldn't have just stood blatantly <laughs> outside the shop. Hey, it's, it's good advertising for yeah, us. People true. see you smoking outside of Ape Shop, they think you're going to make the switch. And yeah. you have. So happy exactly. days. And to be honest, it, it, any any good vape shop, the people that work there have gone through that themselves. I remember when I was contemplating vape uh, to make the switch from vaping, I would stand outside vape shop staring at the window, mm. smoking a cigarette. And I'd be yeah. like, I don't want to go in and feel like an idiot. Yeah. Because it's a whole new world. There's a lot yeah. to learn, or it can be if you oh, really want to get in, get involved well, in that, it. That was the thing for me. That was a big thing for me of having you behind the counter rather than someone I have no clue. Oh, who, I appreciate who it. they Thank are. You. Like. Don't get me wrong, I probably, I'm, I'm not that much of a coward that I would have never walked into a vape shop, but I probably sped it up by a week or two. Yeah, of course. You know, it, rather than me just walking past and going, oh, I'll do it next time. Like, I'm, I'm popping into CJ anyway. Like, I'll talk to him about it. And everything yeah, like and that. like I said, it was never an intentional mm. plan to grind you down. It's only no. because you said about it. Mm. You're like, oh, I want to make the switch once I'm sorted. Yeah. Not a problem. I'll help you out. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, I, like I said, with being around the community and meeting a lot of different customers, mm. um, oh, I think you've, you've seen most of our regulars. Uh, yeah. There's a few newer ones that you've still met as well. Yeah. And, um, and they're nice people. And yeah, they, they, I suppose hearing their background and, and seeing what their sort of things exactly. they're into like, the thing obviously is, fuels yeah. it. 
Well, the thing is, like, nine out of ten of them aren't douchey hipsters, which you naturally assume would yeah, yeah, hang yeah. about. No, like, they're all brickies or uh, bartenders or stuff like that. You see like people that, from yeah. all walks exactly. of life. And that that is exactly. what is so amazing about this industry. Yeah. But And I think we touched on it last week with Elliot briefly. It's like, when you come into a vape store and you look at the shelves and you just say, as a, as a new vapor, you go, whoa like mm. what there's oh, like one thing. flavor of cigarette and it's called cigarette yeah like that that's it maybe you well, can get a menthol you got two for menthol yeah right, and that's but you it. look at a vape stores like e-liquid shelf and you go yeah there are so many flavors well, i don't know where to start i don't know what kits there are and i understand that can be quite daunting of course yeah but just sitting there as a fly on the wall and seeing someone come in and going oh i'll have bubble gum yeah. i'll have this i'll have that and you kind of go oh okay and, it, and you kind of you kind of just it becomes more accepting. Yeah. And when you start seeing people from other walks of life, oh. like you said, scaffolders that come in or, you know, yeah. people that work in law firms and exactly. stuff, it, you kind of go, okay, so this is something for everyone. Yeah. And I will I'll totally agree with you. Uh, a few years ago, massively, I, I find that America does everything bigger and better yeah. in, in air quotations. They go extreme with everything. I don't think they helped with the stereotype. No, they really didn't. They um, really didn't. And I think it, it's got to a point where it is now acceptable in yeah. the UK society, I suppose. It's, yeah. It used to be, oh, you vape, why? Why yeah. well have a cigarette if I want to smoke? And it's like, okay, it's now come away from yeah. that. Like, oh, fair enough. Yeah, like, well, you, in, in the UK, you do have a massive drinking and smoking culture. Like, that's just that's just the nature of, of the UK. And what I think the vape industry, from as an outsider, has done really well over the last few years. I think they did have a period where it was literally just douchey hipsters doing it to be cool but you get out of any industry when it's new and up and coming exactly especially in tech industries yeah but what what the vape industry has gone on to do really well is just sort of integrate with like not integrate but sort of shuffle into that market rather than be in your face and blase about it it's kind of gone right we're here and we're going to wait for you to come to us exactly i think there's two reasons why it's happened one in this country we obviously have uh, the TPD and the tobacco uh, laws, which yeah. means we can't advertise certain things. Uh, we have to be very careful because it's, it's, you know, put under the same umbrella as a, as a uh, smoking product, yeah. which is fine. Like uh, I said yeah. before, I'm all for regulations. It has to be tied under something. Exactly. Because um, before the TPD, it was either tobacco product or pharmaceutical product. Yeah. And if it was pharmaceutical, there wouldn't be any of these vape shops. No, It'll exactly. be, you have to go get it prescribed. Exactly. So I'm grateful for where we're at. But... Um, like I said, for us, kind of being forced to not put it in your face. Yeah. Uh, as well as us just plodding along as an industry going, yeah. we're just going to help people and help people. Yeah. Like exactly. you said, you kind of slot into your own little part of society yeah. and then everyone just kind of accepts it over time. Exactly. And the, and the big thing that you, that big tobacco doesn't do just by its sheer nature is like all you ever hear, when you do hear about vaping, all you're ever really hearing about, yeah, you get the odd horror story here and there, but like, it's become X amount of percent safer. It's become X amount of percent safer upon last time. It's because, you know, whereas tobacco, you, the, the most you can hear about is a new version of Golden Virginia. Like, yeah, yeah. And I think that's really helped it where the strides of progress for vaping has been to become safer rather than with tobacco, which is just to get more people addicted course it is so that's it's one thing, one right? of the reasons i love the uk vaping industry and i'll shout about this on the rooftops you know till i'm blue in the face we have the scientific research we have people like public health england the government have now signed um i don't know what the technical term is but they've signed something and passed it yeah. through government to say <coughs> that they want the uk to be smoke free by 2030 yeah they're on board with vaping they can yeah. see uh, that it is a safer alternative yeah. the nhs yeah. council research public health england their long-term studies suggest it's 95% safer compared to cigarettes. Yeah, That's huge. And yeah. I think, like you said, when the general public see that, they go, so I can kind of do the same thing, but it's not going to kill me. Exactly. They go, well, it makes more sense. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, and we, it's little things. Like, like I said, in this, this um, country specifically, because of the smoke-free by 2030, yeah. I've already had an influx of customers that are saying, oh, well, we can't buy menthol cigarettes from May. Yeah. Rather than being forced out of them, what I like, I'm going to make my own decision exactly. and make the switch now. Yeah. And you see that a lot with people of, like, of, in, a, in all industries of when a forced change is coming, they will try and get ahead of that because... They don't like being told what to do. No, exactly. People don't like doing things because someone else has told them to do it. They like doing things because they have decided to do it. And 
it's your last moments to really make that decision. And it works. As I said, like, ban the living shit out of cigarettes. Charge yeah. the earth from... I'm, yeah. Well, you go to Australia, to, they're yeah. $40 a yeah, packet. Exactly. Like, the thing is, if I, were, if I were to relapse and go back into smoking tomorrow, I would still have the same opinion. Ban the living shit out of it. Yeah. Charge me the earth for it. I don't yeah. care. Like, if it's key... Because I don't want it in my hands. I never have wanted it in my hands. Like, since I was like 20 when i had some sort of brain growing in my head like i i haven't i've always advocated yeah like every time they up the tax yeah it should be higher you know so would you say that um smoking consumed you as a person because it didn't it was no longer you enjoyed it it was more of yeah, a habit and addiction to constantly have them. It, it definitely became an addiction it genuinely became an addiction um and don't get me wrong, there's worse addictions to have, but there there's better ones as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, true. So, um, and I mean, at one point it did kind of uh, overwhelm my um, sort of personality because of the fact that, as I said, I dream of myself having cigarettes to this day. And like, oh God, I hope my girlfriend doesn't watch this. When I used to go out, when I used to go out when I was younger and single, one of my one of the ways I used to strike up a conversation with a woman, I think you've borne witness to this at one point. More than likely. Is I've asked if they've got a light or if they've got a cigarette. It was one of my openers. I know I've it's actually, weak, but still. No, no, you say that. I've actually witnessed the complete opposite, the new age version of that. I have seen someone approach a girl who was vaping and ask if they had any spare e-liquid. Oh, that's... And I was like, I wish I could record this moment. Charlotte, I will never do that. It was like, oh, uh, my, my vape's run out of juice. Have you got any I can borrow? And she was like, yeah, of course, no worries. And I was like, oh, he's done an old school he's, trick he's in a new age time. He's absolutely legend. Oh, it. He's absolutely killing it. Like, man. Absolutely killing it. That's mad. Yeah. So from an outsider's perspective mm. or someone who's recently into this industry and currently enjoying it, if, if you don't mind me saying. Yeah, no, I definitely am. Um, what's your perception on um, <coughs> big tobacco companies? Because... From us, they're the devil. It's like the whole Robin Hood oh, take from the take from the rich, give to the poor, yeah. that sort of scenario. But from an outsider who smoked and has now recently made the transition, can you see why a lot of people do not like the big tobacco? Because yes. they're now getting their slice of the pie in this industry. Oh, yeah. And I get it. You, you can make money however you want. And, and I would rather have more people on vapes than cigarettes. That's the whole pur like purpose of this industry. Of course. However, I still think they're being very sneaky with it. Oh, of course they are. Of course they are. And you're and you're seeing it you're seeing it bold and brash in America at the moment because um I didn't know too much about this, but obviously talking to you, like with the whole problems that America's had, like the problems America's had with like e liquids and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That is literally I cannot imagine it being any other way but literally tobacco companies with their losing money. Losing money and just yeah. panicking about it and just going to the government. Well, it's dangerous. It's more dangerous than you just sort of well, like. Well, no. this is the interesting thing about America is a lot of. Um, <coughs> Sorry. No, it's right. <coughs> Vaping is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> um, make the switch now. Uh, the thing is with America is you've got a lot of. A lot of people in people's pockets yeah. that are very high up. Yeah. So for, for me, I know this is very controversial, but. The whole gun laws. Yeah. The NRA literally fund a lot yeah. of the White House. It's never exactly. going to change. No, it's not. And it's the same with tobacco companies. Yeah. Philip Morris, um, you know, he obviously owns Marlboro. Yeah. He has parts in My Blue, Vipe, yeah. uh, Jewel, obviously. Yeah. And that's just the completely, uh, that is not some, I don't think that's something that's needed in the industry because of the fact that from an outsider's perspective, I'm seeing what smoking is doing to the American healthcare system where because the American health healthcare system is based off of money. Mm -hmm. It's a constant cycle. You need yeah, money. Like you, let's be fair, they're going to be less regulatory on cigarettes because of the fact... I mean, what? In Alabama, you can buy a pack of cigarettes for like $4. Like That's mad. Yeah, it's like something ludicrously low. And like, <clears throat> it's one of those things of... Unless, like... It's one of those things of... The more unhealthy people America have, the more money the hospitals are going to take. So they're going to go along with it. Because everyone's private. Yeah, exactly. And then on top of that, big tobacco. Well, they're not. They don't want to see their profits. No. Drop. So when the when the industry first had its uprise, mm. 
I think it, I don't know whether it was UK or in, uh, UK or the US. You'd have to quote me on this. But in the first financial year, they took like the vaping industry as a whole took a billion dollars or pounds yeah. away from traditional smoking exactly. companies, and they all went, "Oh, this isn't yeah. a fad hipster thing anymore. This yeah. is here to stay. Exactly. What can we do to combat it?" And that's why exactly. you're finding them with the disposable pod systems. Yeah. It, I mean, if you give up one of those, fair play. That's literally what they're for. But what you'll find is they're designed to be high nicotine yeah. and not do the lower ones so you can't wean yourself off. Yeah. So in their opinion, they're more more expensive to run long term because yeah. they're disposable one-use pods or yeah. however many puffs or things like that. So not refillable. You can't change the coils. They're, they're a poor system to, to really use long term. Yeah. They're still winning. They get their money that way. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the thing. Like you see, as you said, like Vibe and Blue are owned by tobacco companies, and the thing is, that's just tobacco companies going a different way of gouging, trying to keep the money in their pockets. It's and it's it's a disgusting thing to do, quite frankly. And I mean, let's be fair. Big tobacco companies would probably happily ground up your kids and put them in cigarettes if it made it cheaper, and you'd still buy them. <laughs> They probably would. To be fair, they, they honestly would. Like the horror stories you hear about how tobacco is like handled and how cigarettes are yeah. made but I, I heard that um you know allegedly mm. that a lot of it's either pre-rolls or tailors or roll-ups i can't remember they literally as they cut off the tobacco leaves all of the overspill is swept up and put back in the machine yeah. to get more product exactly now, that's not very sanitary and no. i know that there's thousands of chemicals in cigarettes yeah, anyway right. but even so would you want to be it's... smoking something that's swept off of the floor yeah like, with, like do you know what i mean poor Diego, the sweatshop workers, bloody sweat all over it. You know, like, <laughs> like no, like I can, I can deal with chemicals. I can't deal with smoking some dude's sweat. I can't. Like, yeah. But at the same time, like, I can't deal with the chemicals either. Like, it's, it's just, like, big tobacco. Like, especially in America, is emblematic. Emblematic. I think I said that right. Correct me in the comments. Just comment everything. Um, <laughs> is emblematic is an example there we go of what is currently wrong in the world of these company these big companies that have that don't care about you no it's more to fill their pockets and make profits so oh, would you say that capitalism rampant? has got to a point where it's it's just too much oh god you're gonna get me started yeah <laughs> yes okay right um for full disclosure i am a socialist Okay. So, yeah, again, comment your hate towards me in the comments. Like, just hate me. <laughs> um, yeah, I am a socialist. I'm, I'm not one of these revolutionary socialists. I'm not going to kick up a fuss. I don't want a revolution. I don't want people to lose their lives over it. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to lose people to lose their lives over capitalism. And the thing is, at the moment, capitalism in its current state... It's a bit too one-sided, isn't it's it? I think so it does need. Unregulated. It's so it's, it needs to have a shift where it comes a bit more yeah, central. I think exactly. Like I mean, I'm all for capitalism and a free market, but at the same time, when it gets to the point where you're exploiting innocent people and yeah, like exactly. companies like Amazon and Apple, like yeah. people that become billionaires in today's society, the only way you become a billionaire is if you it's, under underpay your workers yeah. and overwork your workers yeah. and you dodge tax. Exactly. They are That's, three elements to becoming a billionaire, yeah. really. That's, um, that's the only way to do it at the moment. I it mean, is. And, and to be fair, like I said, if you want to become a billionaire in your own right, not a problem. I haven't got any issue with that as long as you're doing it the right way all the way up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, the way I see it is like, quite frankly, I, like this is where me and you probably differ of slight, of fairly. Okay. I don't see the need for a billionaire to exist. I definitely agree that it's a certain amount of money that is just too it's much. Just for, like, you know? Yeah. I mean, However, I don't. See, so we kind of agree and disagree because yeah. if my ambition is to become a billionaire, I don't see no issue with that yeah. as long as you're doing the right things. Of However, course. if you was to ask me is a billion, billion too much, of course it is. You yeah, don't need a billion too much. of anything. I mean, there's that statistic of like, um, well, there's that maths thing that people throw around for a while of, um, what is it, a million seconds is like 36 days and a billion, I don't know the exact figure Yeah. before anyone gets on me in the comments. Hmm. Um a billion seconds is something like a hundred years or something like that. It's, so it's a massive it's jump. It's a massive jump. No one tends to realize that because it's just changing the letter M for a B. Yeah. And like you're seeing it with tobacco industries where people are making billions on literally killing people. That, that, that's because 
they're just pumping more shit into into cigarettes that's less healthy but it's cheaper. Yeah, of course. Like that's the thing of it. And the reason nicotine is still in there, because quite frankly, I imagine they would take nicotine out of cigarettes if they could get away with it. The only reason it's in there is because it's addictive. Yeah, that's what I'm about to say. That I don't think they would ever take it out because it's the third most addictive yeah. substance if, on the planet. Yeah. If it wasn't I mean? addictive, they'd take it out to cut costs. Of course they would, yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's the fact of it. And I just, I've, as I said, like, the, the second I started getting any semblance of a brain, I realised that, and I was, as I said, I've always been like, no, like, get as many people off of smoking as possible. It's yeah. one of the most dangerous industries on earth. So before we get into an all right political debate, which yeah. I know you are well, quite enjoying and I know you could go on for pretty much days. Uh, is there any advice that you would give anyone who is looking to make the switch or someone who's relatively new, maybe struggling with it? Because I think from coming from people like myself, we've been doing this years. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like, without sounding horrible, we do churn out some of the same stuff. And t- as new products come out, our advice will change. New, you know, e-liquids will come out. But from someone like yourself who's literally just new to it and still seems to be settling with it, yeah. is there anything that you'd offer to new, new people looking to make the switch? So like the, first, like the first thing I'll say to anyone is just quit. Just stop. Just stop now. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter. You, oh, I've, don't wait till your pack's finished because people are idiots. We do things against our own best nature. I mean, yeah. the fact that tobacco exists as a, yeah. as a sellable thing in the first we place. We drink. Alcohol is not the best thing for our system. We shove caffeine up our up our any orifice. And any There's or, caffeine yeah. shampoo now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, so fair enough. Let's be fair. Caffeine isn't the healthiest thing. No. On earth. Um, some people take drugs. Like we're not smart as a race. No, as a race or as individuals in certain aspects. I think that the human race can be very self-destructive. Yeah, we very much are. So just stop. Just do it now. Do it this second, because you know exactly what will happen. You'll go through that pack. You'll go through that last pack that you got. And you'll be, oh, well, I'll just finish this pack off. And then you'll get to the point um, when you finish the pack off and you'll have a really stressful day and you'll go, well, I'll just get one more pack and I'll just have a couple out of it and then I'll quit. But then, oh, well, I can't. That's that's 20 quid on the table. I can't just waste it. you know. And like the thing is, everyone's done it. I've done it. I'm sure you did it. My mum did it. Yeah, like, yeah. Everyone I've known that has quit or attempted to quit has done it yeah i think i had about half a pack remaining yeah uh, and i got a few days without realizing i hadn't had a cigarette and i took one look at them and i went i, I don't want these i don't yeah. need these anymore exactly and i was like anyone and all my friends that smoke was like do you want 10 fags now yeah. over the moon and like yeah do you know how much they are i'm like yeah, yeah but i vape now yeah. like i don't exactly. genuinely want these exactly and that's the thing it's fine to have it there as backup as a, as a, as i said earlier like uh like Having one more cigarette while you're weaning yourself off is not a bad thing. No, nope. and I say it to a lot of customers. Road. No one expects you, if you're going to get genuine vape advice and yeah. you're looking to make the switch, and I think half of it is also mentality, being ready to do that, um, or willing to be open to the to the industry, I suppose. Yeah. We will never have a go at you for, for no. having the occasional cigarette because no. no one expects you to go cold turkey. Exactly. They no. don't even expect you to go cold, cold turkey on heroin. Like, <laughs> let's exactly. Be fair. Like, yeah. Yeah. They wean you off of it. Exactly. That's like, the purpose. It's an addiction. You have to treat it like an addiction first and foremost. And so the first thing you should do with any addiction is just quit. Just quit straight away. Like, and that's not me sort of, I'm not trying, I'm not belittling it, yeah, it's because, a difficult process. Uh, uh, yeah, I've struggled with it before. But just second you go, oh, I should really quit this. Just quit. Just find something else to do, like vaping or uh, the uh, Champax or the gum or the, even if, if you're a masochist, then the, the mouth spray stuff. Oh, that stuff is foul. Yeah, if you're an absolute masochist, go for that one. Like, um, But yeah, so like, just quit. And secondly, go through as much as you can. You might do vape. You might go to vaping, mm-hmm. and you it might not work for you in the slightest. Yeah, just like anything else. So, give everything a go and give it a good go. Don't just two days. Don't in, expect a miracle. Oh, I had another fact. Like, give it like I don't know, like a month or two. I I don't know. I'm not a medical so expert. So, would you say um, if you're if you're looking to vape, to rather than say I don't know, buy a kit online maybe go to your local vape shop definitely try and get some advice definitely. try and you know learn definitely. as much as you can talk to your doctor yeah. like first and foremost talk to your doctor figure out what figure just find out what options you have yeah and 
if you're going down the vaping route, talk to someone that knows about it. Yeah. Remember, like, in certain aspects, you are stupid. <laughs> Act like it. Talk to someone that knows their stuff. You could be the you could be the greatest quantum physicist on earth. But you, you might know not know nothing about fashion. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, you could be an amazing chef, but you can build a shelf from IKEA sort of thing. It's not a bad thing not to know. And I think that's where a swallowing lot, pride. Yeah. I think that's where a lot of like a lot of it does sometimes come to when you know come from when people just go online. Yeah, is, of course. Well, I don't want someone talking down to me. They're not gonna talk down to you. For a start, if they talk down to you, you complain to their manager and they lose their job. Yeah, simple as that. Like, if you're going to be, you know, if you want me to speak about it in a selfish way, that's just the bare bones of it. And on top of that, like, nine out of ten of them have gone through what you're going through. They know what you're going through. Right? Yeah, I always say there's two types of vape shops. You'll know very quickly what one you're in. Yeah. As a consumer, you'll either have someone who's willing to help with absolutely everything. Yeah go through everything, set things up for you, talk about your options, try not to confuse you, but really break it down on a almost a molecular level yeah. to make sure you understand what you're going through. Exactly. Or you're going to walk into a shop that just wants to take your yeah. money and they're going to... Yeah, you, exactly. you can tell by looking at some of the kits and go, yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't need a £100 kit to quit. Yeah. It is very situational, of but course. it's very, very rare that we yeah. go, we recommend a £120 setup to stop. Like yeah, it's, it's not exactly. those things. Like that's, that's the thing, like... Just speak to people that know more than you. Like that's so get out your comfort zone. Speak to people that know more than you. Yeah, whether yeah. that's someone in a vape shop, whether that's your doctor, whether that's Tim from down the street that gave up six months ago. Don't matter. Like, yeah, yeah. Speak to someone that knows more than you because I'm. I can put money on it. Everyone has gaps in their knowledge. Of course I, I do. definitely do. I have gaping chasms in my knowledge. <laughs> yep, you and me both, mate. <coughs> Apparently, my health. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, you're going through a, a, a transitional period yeah. where you're vaping more and you're going to start coughing up all the crap that you had when you were smoking. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. enjoy the next few weeks because you will uh, cough up big old random colored splodges of stuff and you'll wonder, what is that and why was it inside me? Since a little boy, I've always dreamed of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just to jump in, get some advice, know what your options are. Yeah. Uh, Go into a local vape store and talk to people who, you know, like you said, have yeah. more knowledge of the industry than yourself. Exactly. Uh, and if you don't want to do that, then talk to people that have already made the switch. That yeah. makes that makes sense. Exactly. So swallow like, your pride. Yeah, swallow your like, pride. That's, that's a big thing of it because you see it. Like, I never talked to my doctors once. I never talked to anyone that knew better than me. Yeah. Once until like, like and this is not blowing smoke up his ass. That's the last <laughs> thing I ever want to do in my life. But until I talked to Jay about vaping. I never talked to anyone. Like, I think the most I did was I talked to my doctor and I went, look, I want to quit. Like, what is there on offer? And they went, they started going through a list and the first one was Champix because it was like alphabetical. And I yeah, just went course. that. Like, you know, that, that's the most I did when it came to referring to someone that knew better. And I'm pretty sure I would have done it sooner if I actually listened to people that did better, that knew better. Yeah, of course. That's just a, it's a problem that a lot of people have, including myself. Like, if you were, to start telling me about your favorite film right now, I'd be stubborn as a rock, you know? Like, no, that's what people are like. People are stubborn. Stop being stubborn. I know it's, I know it's not easy. Swallow your pride for five minutes and listen to the bloke behind the counter or the bloke in the, or your doctor or your nurse or your, your mate Tim down the pub. Fair play. Yeah, that's nice. And definite caveat if you have, if you like, if you stumble a bit and you have one fag on a night out or something when you normally have a fag that is not losing. No, not at all. We, like I said, um, process. we will always give you guys the, the best advice we can. And when you're, especially when you're new to vaping, no one in the vaping industry that has been doing this a while will expect you to give up cold turkey. It is, it's near on impossible. Horrible. It happens. It does happen. Yeah. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's very difficult yeah. unless you hit, you get one of those perfect setups where everything just falls into place. Yeah, exactly. Now I think the industry is in a state where uh, there is literally something for everyone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's all about the more information you give people in the vape stores, the, the easier it is we can tailor yeah. it to you. Exactly. Like that's the thing. Like obviously me and Jay know each other fairly well and he knew my, how, like what sort of smoker I was and everything like that. 
he knows his shit because he like I can remember when I first moved over I was hanging out with you and you and like within two weeks of hearing me like no probably within days of hearing me what to say I want to make the transition you'd figured out okay I want to get you on this device with these Nick, with these Nick Salts he knows what the fuck he's on about I didn't ask him to do that yeah and like I said from a friend's perspective I didn't want to yeah. push it on you I just no, wanted to let you know that when you're ready, yeah. don't worry, I've got exactly. you sorted. Yeah, sort of I never felt pressured Good. at the end of the day. You know, he gave his consent. This, yeah. <laughs> except to come on this podcast. Please help. Yeah, Please I've, I've held him to ransom. There's actually a gun behind the set, point at the back of his head. Well, I think that ra- nicely wraps up the la- well, one of the last parts of this podcast. So we're going to take a little break, stretch our legs a bit, and then we'll be back for this week's Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Welcome back to Chilling with the Omies podcast and this week's Sherlock Holmes is uh, basically where I put my little hat on, get my little molecule out of my, I yet to get a, a, like a, a vaping pipe. I really want one. If anyone finds one, leave a comment below and I will buy it. I think it would be a perfect prop for this segment. But essentially this segment is where we talk about um, a topic in the industry that either I've been investigating or something that's come up. Now, something that's literally come up today um, which is perfectly timed, was actually sent to me by Dudley, who is someone who I've spoke about a lot on this channel. Um, I need to get him on for a podcast. It'll be quite yeah, interesting. probably should. So the World Health Organization, I think it ties mm. in perfectly from what we were talking about with uh, big pharma companies, yeah, um, the UK vape scene and how the NHS have done the studies, uh, Cancer Research, Public Health England. Yeah. Now the World Health Organization or the WHO, is mm. as they you know abbreviate to, released an article saying that the WHO warning on vaping draws harsh response from UK researchers. So uh, first off, I find this quite funny, purely because you've got two massive organisations just having a Twitter spat, essentially. I'm, I'm just waiting for the diss tracks. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be brilliant. Public Health England diss track, that'd be <laughs> mad. So ba- basically, the WHO have said that there are new warnings about vaping issued this week And they've prompted a strong pushback from public health experts in the United Kingdom who charged that WHO was spreading blatant misinformation about the potential risks and benefits of electronic cigarettes. The pointed exchange comes amid growing controversy, uh, I can't even talk, controversy over the value of e-cigarettes and how they how to weigh their role as a smoking sensation tool against their potential harms, especially a lot. Especially, I can't even talk. Especially among young people, and for whom vaping has soared in popularity, uh, the statements align with others made by the UK public health officials in recent months, which have generally supported vaping as a useful alternative uh, to traditional cigarettes. In contrast, whose cautions about vaping echo those voiced by the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and some US scientists who are expressing alarm over both known and still uncertain hazards from vaping. After an outbreak of severe lung disease that is still being investigated and is linked heavily to THC containing e-cigarettes. CDC now recommends e-cigarettes of all kind uh, never to be used by use, which I totally yeah. agree with. It's yeah, an adult product. We are all on the same page there. Yeah, like it's it's a bit like telling kids not to smoke. Like, just don't get addicted to this thing. Like, it makes exactly. sense. Like, I'm fully in agreement with that bit. So, the WHO have expressed reservations about the value of e-cigarettes and grave concern about their risks. The, organized, the organization stated, there is no doubt that e-cigarettes are harmful to health and are not safe but it is too early to provide a clear answer on the long-term impact of using them or being exposed to them. The WHO also suggested there is not enough evidence to support the use of these products for a smoking sensation and urged smokers looking to try and quit to use nicotine patches or gum or other tools uh, such as hotlines that counsel, counsel their smokers. Right, this is where it gets me. The UK response was harsh. The WHO, this is literally the quote directly from it. The WHO was a history, has a history of anti-vaping activism that is damaging their reputation. This document is particularly malign, Um, malign, malign, maligned, maligned. Yeah. Um, Peter Hayek, who directs the Tobacco Dependence Research Unit at Queen Mary University of London, wrote a statement released today by the UK Science Media Centre. There is no evidence that suggests vaping is highly addictive. He said less than 1% of non-smokers become regular vapors. Vaping does not lead young people to smoking. Smoking among young people is an all-time low. There is clear evidence that suggests that e-cigarettes help smokers quit. 
E-cigarettes are clearly less harmful than tobacco, says John Britton, who is a director of the UK Centre of Tobacco and Alcohol Studies and the consultant in the respiratory medicine of the University of Nottingham in a in similarly critical comments. That was a mouthful. Yeah. Who misrepresents the available scientific evidence he charged? Public Health England maintains that vaping is at least 95% less harmful than smoking cigarettes. Earlier this month, a team of six experts disputed that 95% claim in a publication of the American Journal of Public Health, led by uh, Thomas Eisenberg, a, uh, a psychologist at Virginia Commonwealth University who d- co-directs the Center of the Study of Tobacco Products and serves as a paid consultant in litigation against tobacco and e-cigarette industries. The author suggests there is an accumulation of evidence of potential harm from e-cigarettes and growing evidence that e-cigarette use is associated with, with subsequent cigarette smoking. Although the tobacco among the U.S. middle, middle and high school students has dropped, a uh, 2017 study in JAMA Pediatrics report that across seven studies of the examined initiation of smoking in teenagers and young adults, those who had used e-cigarettes had a 23% chance of starting to smoke compared with the 7% chance when there was no e-cigarette use. Uh, the short and long-term risk of these cigarettes continue to be investigated, whereas my belief the products are at lower risk than cigarettes. Others say the jury is still out. Studies in animals and people are now been exploring where, whether e-cigarettes pose chronic risks to the lungs and cardiovascular system. This is mental. Absolutely it's, mental. So essentially, you've got the who. They're yeah. like, you know, they've got a history of anti-vaping yeah. activism. Saying, oh, no, you don't want to vape. That, that stuff's going to kill you. It's, yeah. it's not as safe as everyone's saying. And then you've got the big old Gs over at UK going, yeah. what are you saying? We've yeah. got the scientific evidence. What, what are your initial thoughts on that? It's well, for a start, like just to go back over uh, over old ground from this yeah. from this very podcast. Like I a I tend to trust the NHS more because yeah. it's not there for profit. No, it's a national health service that is exactly. publicly available. Keeping you out of their doors yeah. is what makes them money. Whereas getting you in their doors is what makes the American healthcare system money. And That's the complete opposite. Do you exactly, know what I mean? so, and this. It has obviously, well, I believe it said in there a couple of times, it has originated from America. Yeah. Yeah, fine. That's not entirely grounds to dismiss it, but it is. it makes it dubious in my yes, mind. Yes, 100%. And then on top of that, I mean, what the, um, there's a statistic that stood out there of, uh, what was it, 7% of kids that don't vape. Still go to smoking, but 23%, 23% that vape go to smoking. Well, A... No shit. It's nicotine. Yep, and kids should not be vaping. No, that's exactly. the issue. There. Like the 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 like, and B, it's a smaller group that you're going to. Of course, it's going to be higher percentages because it's a smaller group yep. that are currently intaking nicotine. Yeah, of course, a percentage of that. It's it's like if I said to you, the like, if I asked you, like, what's the percentage of people of adults that don't smoke? going into smoking versus adults who vape going into smoking. Well, yeah, it's a completely different demographic. Exactly. You're looking at you're looking at two completely different statistics um, and two, quite frankly, fairly irrelevant s- statistics. The argument shouldn't be, well, vaping should be banned. It should be the same with cigarettes of, well, how do we get kids off, off of, of the, vape? Yeah. Like, so there was a, there's been massive hoo-hahs in America with the flavor ban and mm. this whole lung disease thing, which is already been found the whole world knows it it was illicit thc products that yeah. were using vitamin e isotate to thicken up e-liquids and using them in in vaping products yeah. right now any registered or reputable vape store was not selling these products and well if they were in america they definitely aren't in the uk it for me personally looking from the outside in at america the vaping industry has got their hand on their head yeah. And they're, they're sort of laughing because of the status in, but also very worried that it could have a domino effect. Exactly. Like it's... And this just sums it up. Like you, The issue I've got with that is they've got scientific evidence in front of them yeah. that is known globally. Yeah. And they go, nah, we don't like, believe that. We're going to make our own statistics up on stuff that you know makes it yeah. sound bad. When realistically, the statistics that are terrible in that mm. are the fact that your kids are vaping and yeah. they shouldn't be. Exactly. That's yeah. the issue. And like a big thing, obviously, is like it circles back to it's 
vape companies in America that are doing this and putting shite into vape, into mm-hmm. e-liquids are doing the exact same as the tobacco custom, uh, companies. Yeah, of course they are. The thing is, you're not limiting that company's ability to do things. No, the FDA... And then you're blaming the entire... F- it's like it's like me going like, oh, well, Jack the Ripper was was probably white, so we should probably ban white people. It's like... Yeah, you're just generalizing the whole industry. Exactly. You're, over, you're tarring yeah. them with the same brush rather than going, well, maybe we should make legislation... To prevent to this, prevent happening, this again. happening again. Yeah, exactly. Like, so like I said, with the, a lot of vapors have a, a very split opinion on the TPD. I yeah. personally am a massive fan of the TPD. Reason being, we ain't going to have this stuff in America, yeah. in the UK. Exactly. We don't have... The FDA, yet again, it's in the government's pocket. Exactly. So the FDA are still in this transitional period where they're like... You know, I think in the US, e-cigarettes are only known as vapes or its own category since 2016. So in legislation terms, it's very, very new. Whereas in the UK, it was way before that. Yeah. Because exactly. we were like, don't worry, we've done the studies. Yeah. And bear in mind, the studies that were done were on the very, very first terrible shisha yeah. pens, which, by the by the way, aren't really sold anymore yeah. because things have come so far. I just don't understand how one nation, which is pretty much the size in its own continent, yeah. can just disregard facts and go, nope, we want to push this agenda, ignore your hold hard facts. This is what we're going to say. It's money at the end of the day, isn't it? Like, that's that's the thing. It's What it is, is it's a group of people who are looking for an excuse to earn more money from people that are trying to keep the money that they're already earning and so making a scapegoat, a scapegoat out of people that are trying to make more money. Exactly. Like, the last part of this, um, this article says, the question of whether e-cigarettes help smokers quit at what and at what cost remains controversial. Yeah. Tobacco kills more than 8 million people a year worldwide. And many smokers have shared publicly that e-cigarettes have helped them quit. Yeah. A randomized trial run by Hayek and others reported a year ago in New England Journal of Medicine that e-cigarettes were more effective tools than nicotine replacement therapy when it came to helping smokers quit. Yeah. As, ha- as happens often in the vaping field, however, the data came under scrutiny. Subsequent letters to, uh, to the journal noted, among other concerns, 40% of the 438 participants assigned to e-cigarettes as a quitting tool uh, were still using them after one year, and a quarter of those in the e-cigarette group wound up becoming dual users. So they were smoking yeah. and vaping, not jewelers in the device, uh, meaning they both vaped and smoke. The dispute is unlikely to be resolved soon, but for the WHO, the downside of e-cigarettes clearly outweighs their benefits. E-cigarettes are currently banned in over 30 countries worldwide. The group shared that this week, with more and more countries considering bans to protect young people. That's mad. That is, like... And quite frankly, I think they're attacking that study for the completely wrong reasons. Yes. Like, I, I, 400 is not a good sample size. <laughs> Dove true. in their adverts use a bigger sound, yeah, sample yeah, size. Like... That's the problem there, is you're looking at a very small sample size. It's like, you're not going to get accurate results from that. You'll get a, uh, a reading. You'll, you'll get a reading, you know, but you but want something is, a bit more intense. You can't call that conclusive. Like, either way, like, yeah, yeah, genuinely either way. As I said, I'm new to vaping, so, like, I can sort of see, like, I can see that it definitely needs to be looked into. It definitely needs to be continuously looked into. But at the same time, like every, pretty much every study that I've seen and heard of has pointed in the direction of, yeah, vaping's at the very worst the same as cigarettes. And that's like at the very worst. Like that's proper sort of like almost off the edge of the cliff of like. Yeah, I mean, like I said, in the UK, we're very lucky. We've got the scientific research. It's 95% cleaner and healthier as opposed to smoking a cigarette. I'm going to run with that. Yeah, like simply that. It's been done by all of our big government bodies. The thing is, at the end of the day, like, I know I'm sort of crapping on the study that sort of, on a study that sort of says, yeah, vaping's good for you. But at the same time, like, that comes with the caveat of I'm more likely to listen to the NHS. Yeah. Like, and that's not nationalism. That is literally just this is a non profit. If, if yeah, it's a non profit, it's non profit. If if another, if another, like say Canada, say what I don't okay. know. I sorry, any Canadians, I don't know the name of your healthcare system. I have no idea either. Yeah, no clue. But if I know it's nationalized, it's like it's like the NHS. If if the Canadian healthcare system came out and when there's a bit of a worry about e-cigarettes, they'll go okay. 
needs more testing. Like, exactly. But I'd I'd give it prudence. Nowadays, like the fact that Medicare is just for money, I, I feel I like we get into the point where the average person mm. that doesn't live in America, or even people that live in America, um, they're just laughing at the USA. Yeah, they're just like you're just being so ludicrous. <laughs> and yeah. I, I did a, a video on this uh, when the flavor ban was first a thing last year. Yeah, um, India. One of the big, well, I think they're like third in the world of the amount of consumed cigarettes. They ban vaping, like the sale, the transport, the the use of absolutely anything. They literally had a knee jerk reaction to America because yeah. they wanted to be on their side. Oh yeah, of course. And to have, to know that there's 30 countries worldwide that ban vaping is crazy to me. Yeah. However, it kind of makes sense because I'm guaranteeing 27 out of that 30 countries their sole uh, commodity is tobacco. Yeah, of so course. of course they want to protect that. But at the same time, when you've got scientific evidence to suggest that it's, uh, it, uh, it just it baffles me so much. Yeah. The problem with it is it seems like it's just politics and money seeping into what is essentially hell. And the thing is, it's not even a case of vaping companies need to take due diligence. No. The amount of vaping companies that go above and beyond their duties as a vaping company yeah. to not only prove like time and time and time again that we are refining this industry to be yeah. better... When it has medical studies that back that, you think, cool, you can't argue with that. Yeah. But yet there's still people like the Americans that are like, nope, we're well, going to ignore all that. The thing is, you doesn't also, suit our agenda. You've also got to keep in mind, like, yeah, vaping, what, vaping's been around as an industry for what, like 10, 15 years? 10, 15 years, years yeah. at a push, yeah, yeah. That's really still young in, for an industry. It's in its in in infancy. In infancy. If, if something goes tits up, That's that, it. that could be the entire in industry collapsing. No vaping company is going to take that risk this early on. Don't get me wrong. When they're as big as big as like the tobacco like industry well, and this everything is the like thing. That, then yeah, we've had constant like drawbacks and fighting yeah. all the time. <coughs> uh, at first, you had the mech pods that were exploding. Then you yeah. had popcorn lung, which is the most ludicrous thing. Yeah. We can go into that another day. Yeah, that's a whole podcast on its own. Uh, now you've got the, the whole THC stuff, which, like I said, the evidence yeah. is very clear. They're just choosing not to. You know, like you said, they're tying yeah. the whole industry of a brush or something that goes exactly. over less than 1%. Exactly. There's like, constant blowbacks and drawbacks mm. for this industry because I think they're scared that long term it's the future. It's the like, future's now, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah, like let's be fair, like vaping is the future of smoking. Yeah. Like, yeah, fine, people are going to get onto vaping like they do with smoking. Like, that's a fact of it. Like, that's, it's a You're percentage essentially of it. giving it a battery, making it cleaner for Yeah. You. Exactly. That's essentially what it is. It's the exactly. same thing. It's the same thing we do with everything. We just re, re, reinvent. reinvent it. Yeah. And like the thing is, like, what it is is you see it with. Well, you, I'm going to get political now. <laughs> I just, you see it with oil companies fighting against electric cars. You see it yep. with um, renewable energy as well. Renewable energy. You yep. see it with literally every industry that is currently going through a massive rev uh, Yeah, anything that's old invention. school and something new comes up, they try and squash it exactly. to stay on top. Exactly, and that's just what it feels like. Don't get me wrong. If they turn around and they have a massive study that conclusively states vaping is going to kill you in five minutes. Then Here's the question, yeah. though. Here's the question. This is where I take a different approach to a lot of people. Mm. Even if... Right. Even if they come back and say, oh, we've done a, a conclusive uh, vaping study. Yeah, it's going to kill you. It, it kills X amount of people a year. Yeah. In my, the way my brain works, if that amount is less than that's, cigarettes... Oh, God, yeah. I'm still going to do it. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm still taking thing. less of a risk. That's the thing. You know if, I mean? they, if they... Unless an organization, like, as I said, the Canadian Health Service... Just comment it down below if you're from Canada. Um, <laughs> I think I've got a few uh, viewers from Canada. Comment it. Um, I'm running your comment section. Though. You are, mate. You are asking um, a lot from the comments, but I rate it. Yeah, I want to see some work, guys. <laughs> I want to see some work. Um, like, yeah, the Canadian Health Service, the National Health Service, any any health service that is not that is single payer, that is single, um, yeah, that is single payer health service that yeah. is that is government run. If that comes out tomorrow and goes vaping is more dangerous than cigarettes i'm going to and we've done a massive study on it i'm going to perk up and listen yeah of course like that's the thing but it's like i always say just, with el science like the, yeah. the, the the other side of the phoenix company yeah. we strive to make the safest and cleanest e-liquids yeah. on the planet 
Um, and that's what we do. You know, if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. I work very closely with them. Um, they're an incredible, you know, lab to have manufacturing, you know, option to have. And I said this last week, I've become almost like an e-liquid snob because yeah. I know what's in our e-liquids and I was in exactly. other people's e-liquids. Yeah. But it's getting that safety and that assurance yeah. across to the general exactly. public. But when you've got big tobacco yeah. doing this and saying, yeah. oh, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. And what we said earlier, <laughs> masses of people are dumb. Yeah. So they're just going to go, well, they're shouting louder. Exactly. I'll listen to those. Exactly. It's... And big tobacco will be able to shout louder. Oh, they've got billions. Of it. And they will band together because, let's be fair, they all have Protecting the same their own pockets. Yeah. Like, regardless whether it's like Golden Virginia teaming up with uh, B&H or whatever, just two mm. brands out of the top of my head. Like, They've still got the same interest. Like, yeah, they'll battle internally for who buys what cigarettes. But if as it, an if industry, they're going to band together. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. like the vaping industry did with this flavor ban. I'm, exactly. I, I don't, I don't live my life with regrets. But if I could have gone to the march outside the White House, yeah. I would have. The turnout was incredible. Yeah. Like, vapors are just amazing when it comes to coming together yeah. as a community. And I know we've been quite condescending, re, like in t- at points yeah. in this podcast, but. Overall, people are smartening up. You're seeing this all across. I mean, like yep. Americans calling for more and more Americans calling for a government-run healthcare system. Yeah, you know, um, with the with the flavor ban, like the yeah, people um, marching Just against that. up to the White like, House, going now. Nah. Yeah, like you're seeing more and more examples of this, and it's not like I don't want to come off the wrong, uh, from the wrong side. I people are getting better. Yes. We're learning more. You said it earlier, yeah. we have all the information in the world, palm of our hands. Exactly. People, sp- this is where attention is. If you can get onto this, you win. Exactly. And if you can use that time to learn, and, and not yeah. just about your country, your government, but the bigger picture and yeah. really see what's going exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah. That's when you start going, oh, hang on a minute. Exactly. Like, Do you know you, what I mean? you've got the informa- all the information on, the, on earth and the ability to check sources as well. Yes. Because that's a big thing that, like, uh, obviously coming from a media background, that is a big thing with news and information nowadays. Yeah, you've got to make sure people, it's... people aren't checking sources anymore. So you're Joe, one seeing thing I see massive him... websites crop up yeah. where no one's checking the sources and people exactly. are just eating it up. Because people just see a clickbait headline and then they just take that headline and run with it. Do you know what I mean? You have, a, you have a headline saying vaping kills people. People that don't vape or smoke naturally go, yeah. oh, don't do that. That's really bad for you. Yeah. The amount of people I've had to speak to and I'm like, it, yeah, but it doesn't. Yeah. And I have to explain it, not not it's, in the condescending way, but mm. just kind of re-educate them. Yeah. Like, um, there's a great, if you have Chrome, first of all, if you don't have Chrome, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> um, if you have Chrome as your browser, there's a great plugin that you can download called Bullshit Detector. Oh, right. Okay. Really good. Well, it, it basically, um, it doesn't like tell you whether an article is real or fake, but what it does is it basically comes up with a little warning on like, say, even on Facebook, Twitter, stuff like that. If something's linked to an article or something like that, it will tell you how trustworthy that organization is as a whole, which oh, wow. just, it helps, it streamlines it a bit. But check your sources. Like this is something that goes everywhere. Check your sources. Like I don't so care what you're talking about. From hearing this, obviously right now, what are your initial thoughts? My initial thoughts are it's, it's a knee-jerk attack on something that people don't know much about. Yeah, I'll give you that. That's a fact. Because, like, no, like, let's be fair. Like, as 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 much as it's becoming more popular, vaping is still a fairly unknown entity. It is. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's, it's a new industry. The it's industry is in its infancy and it's starting to grow legs. But at every angle it, or opportunity, it gets to grow or take its steps or say its first word. It's being shot down by the tobacco industry exactly. at every every angle. Yeah, of course, and it will be. It will be. It'd be you know, it'd be a bit like you ha- you own Tonka to- Tonka trucks, and I bring out I don't know plastic machines. You're gonna try and shoot me down, of course. You're gonna and you're gonna try and do it in my infancy when I'm at my weakest. And this is where I I think it where we were talking about capitalism and such. Yeah. Like I said, I don't want to get too much into it, but yeah, like the angle of it is. They're going, well, we can try and shoot this down, but while we're doing that, we'll have our slice of the pie there industry too. Exactly. And it's like, make your exactly. mind up. Like if you think it's that bad, why yeah. are you making vaping products? They're hedging their bets at the end of the day. Like, quite frankly, the smart tobacco companies are the ones, because let's be fair, progress is going to happen no matter what. Yep. Even if e-cigarettes die on their ass in the next five years, something will come up to replace them. Yep. That's a fact. Something will come up to do basically the same job and replace them. The smart tobacco companies are used smart 
in Loosely. a very kind way. All right. Is I'm being very nice to them. They're assholes, but they're smart in that they're getting in on it before it gets before you know, before they have to pay billions to carve out a part of that market. Yeah, of course. It, like the thing is, like. They want to protect their their bread and butter. Yeah, like, but they're also using other avenues to make sure that they're not losing too much. Exactly. Overall. At the end of the day, corporations are not your friends. Their entire no. existence is there to sell to you. Yeah. And anything that's coming from corporations or countries essentially run by corporations, I am going to be very dubious of. Yeah. As I said, the NHS comes out tomorrow, turns around, and goes, everyone, drop your vapes. Seriously. Well, I don't know whether you yeah. would have seen this or not. It's been on the channel a few times. Um, but the NHS have now secured a deal with eSig Wizard. Yeah. They're opening vape stores inside hospitals yeah, across the UK. Yeah. That, like, if you just hear that on the face value, you're like, well, it can't be that bad. The National yeah. Health Service is literally putting them in exactly. hospitals. Make sure you're checking your sources. Make sure you're, you know, if, if you do see any clickbait articles, mm. actually read them and read between the lines. Yeah. Like we've, we've touched on many a times in this podcast, there's so much information out there. You've gotcha. got to make sure that you're using yeah. it the right way. Exactly. And you've got to keep in mind, like, at the end of the day, places that do clickbait articles have the same attitude as the tobacco. Like, they're just there to make money. To be fair, they're, they're also very similar to YouTubers. Mm. Um, and I hate to admit that, but it's true. YouTubers more are clicks, bastards, more views. all of them. More, more clicks, yeah. more views, more exposure, yeah. more money. Exactly. Like, and yeah, so, it's one big yeah. cycle. And you, and you see it, and you're especially seeing it in the death of print media, like with the whole Meghan Markle thing, like yeah. oh, that's fairly relevant. And um, that's just being blown well out of proportion when quite frankly, like... It's not that Yeah, deep. again, at me. Yeah, exactly. It's a smart decision on her part, and I support her completely. Yeah, to be fair, I, I was never under the illusion that she'd done anything no. that bad, and it's just been completely spun. But then you'll see, you're seeing, like, headlines, like... Um, what was it Meghan Markle's dad? She like I don't know, like she she was a dick to me or something like. That. There's an exact, <laughs> I think it's like Daily Mail or something like. There's an exact headline out there. Google it. Google Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle. Yeah, to be fair, it's a hot topic right now. Pop up like, um, but yeah, like that's the thing. Like, but to get round back to the point, uh, <laughs> it's fine. It's what podcasts are for. They're trying to sell you stuff. And like, if I turned around and I and I titled my article "Famous YouTuber," oh, I wish J Jupiter, uh, see va famous YouTuber J Jupiter speaking to this girl in a bar, and then you scroll right down to the end, and it's his sister. Like, it's, <laughs> let's be fair, you're going to click on the one that says "Famous J, J Jupiter spotted in a bar with another yeah, woman knowing that rather. at the time be married or whatever yeah. you think oh he's obviously doing something yeah, dirty. rather than yeah. look at these pictures of J yeah, Jupiter the, sharing the, a the pint is, with his sister or something exactly. like that exactly I mean today's society is very driven by negativity yeah, it spreads a lot, it lot quicker than positivity it and is, it's, it's quite sad to see yeah. it's quite sad to see it, people would rather hear how their pensions are being stolen than and how their wheelie burns a bit that's one thing Britain Sorry, I'm getting on my high horse now. That's one thing, Britain. Remember when you all had a sh fucking heart attack about that? Oh, immigrants are stealing my wheelie bins. Fuck off. No one wants your wheelie bins. <laughs> it's some 15-year-old twat and they cost nothing from the council. Fuck off. There we go. Um, You've just been told. <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way, uh, if you ever fancy seeing me do podcasts regularly, which I imagine half of you don't anymore... <laughs> Let us know in the comments. Yeah, Sam was thinking about doing like more of a, yeah. um, was it like pop culture sort yeah, of Yeah, like sort stuff. of pop culture, um, current, like not full on current affairs. It wouldn't be anything too political, but. Yeah, you know, just things that are relevant and yeah, like, being spoke about. Yeah, like your Meghan Markle's. Just so yeah, like that. That, I'm actually looking forward to that. I'm hoping you, that I. Your I, fucking I would, wheelie bins. <laughs> I'm hoping I could make my, my way onto that at some point. That'd be great. Oh, yeah, well, never know if they, if they like the idea. If they like this sort of back and forth enough, then you might end up being my co-host. Oh, that'd be awesome. So, that'd be really, really cool. Comment comment down below, Jay as co-host. Co give him more work. Do yeah, it. yeah, more content. Do more it. content to I pull want, out. I want him bleeding from the fingers by the end of the year. <laughs> I've got to stay up tonight and edit this video and the po <laughs> uh, this podcast, another video. The the chain keeps going, but I'm this loving is, every minute of it. I, so. I can't imagine this being a fun one for you to edit. Uh, it'll be all right. 
Is that, you, right. you know you're going to get shit. You're either going to get nothing or shit in the comments. So no, and that's hey, to be fair, I love the comment section on my channel. It's mad. I love it. it always yeah, pops I've, I, I've, I've got a feeling I'm, I might unleash the fucking horrible side of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> my fair comments. play. Just fair Pandora's play. box this shit. Like. But yeah, I think that is a nice sort of part to, to wrap it up. Now, I'm going to leave Sam's socials in the description as well as the link to the article that we were quoting from. Also, I did put this on my Snapchat story a few days ago and uh, I will be creating a Chilling with the Omis Instagram page where I'm going to be sharing pictures of the guests that we've had on and also uh, kind of carousel posts of all of the... Um, articles and, and the Sherlock Holmes sections. So for people that are just listening to the audio only, they can still have somewhere to go. And people like yourselves, if you just want to leave, leave a follow or just keep up to date with the podcast stuff, there will be a place for you. Uh, but thank you so much for coming on, uh, Sam. No I worries, really do man. appreciate it. No worries. It. Thanks uh, for plugging my social medias, even though fuck all happens on uh, them. Uh, you never like know. You, people if you might... follow me, there's going to be six months of nothing and then you'll just have a tirade <laughs> of pictures that I took. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you do need to post more because you, really you're do. you're a great filmmaker and a great great photographer. I do so my best. People need to see that. But yeah, so thank you guys for watching so much. I really appreciate it. If you made it this far, then you are the real MVP. Leave a comment saying I made it to the end. Another because, comment. Yeah, just comment everything. Yeah, just everything. Leave a daily vlog of comments. That'd will, be great. Jay's going to go through this with a fine tooth comb and every time I've, I've said comment down below, he's going to put a timestamp on there so oh. I can remind you. And now I've said that, he has to. Oh, 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 ha -ha. Oh, my future self is hating yeah. you right now. <laughs> but yeah, that is the end of the podcast, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, be sure to leave a like. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you haven't already. And if you want to follow the the day day to day or the behind the scenes of all this, how this happens, then make sure you follow my Instagram. The Chilling with the Omi's Instagram will be in the link in the description also. And I shall see you guys in the next video. Peace.